We just got on a nice school of pelchers. Look at that neck. Makes any fisherman happy. What's going on guys? Victor here. I'm with my buddy Juno Ryan. He's got his own channel. You guys gotta check him out. This is my best friend. He actually just flew in from Okinawa, what, yesterday? O Okinawa, Japan, yeah, two days ago. So I've been over there for two years now. Been watching these guys catching all these great fish, cooking up all these great meals, and they've been doing it without me. Yeah. So today we're gonna get on some fish and I'm gonna have an excellent dinner. I hope, well, oh, I, I hope I'm invited to dinner actually. <laughs> no, he's, he's staying. So we got Brookie behind the camera and there's only one thing that makes me happier than Brooke and Ryan, and that is a live well full of bait. Look at this. Tell me this just doesn't make you happy. I love seeing a live well full of pilchards. We got a combination of cigar minnows. So we netted these a little bit earlier on the beach. We found a nice school of sardines and cigar minnows. And then we just blacked out the well partially with some pilchards. We're about to head offshore, look for some dolphin, almaco jacks, but we kind of got the rods for everything. Um, we brought mutton rods, we brought the tile fish rods, so we'll see what we get into. And thank you guys so much for entering the giveaway. We had like 5,000 entries, which is insane. So seriously, thank you guys. I'm gonna post the winner right here on the screen. I haven't picked them yet, because I'm gonna do like one of those random generators. But if you guys see your name on the screen here, shoot me an email, comment below, and I will get you guys that giveaway package. Now let's head offshore. What? Talk to us. What do you mean? What? What's going on here? Right? Hey, I'm trying to sabotage you. This one's for Brian Crisp. This is called the Brian Crisp method. You sit down, you get comfortable, and you catch yourself a fish. You're just out here catching lunkers, son. <laughs> See, I'm gonna stand up. Bad form. You're not gonna catch anything. That's a keeper yellowtail. What you got? Oh, I don't know. I think we got a little snapper. I think like, it's a yellowtail. We're just out here, flatline and some baits, real shallow. I haven't caught anything all day, really. Other than a couple little things out on the weed lines. So we just came in here with all of our live baits. Oh yeah, we got another yellow dog. On a hot yellow Look at that. That's a this nice is size. this type of stuff that people, you know, dream about catching on the drift boats. Oh, Look at this. Good. So we're flatlining pilchers. We came in on this first reef and we just lightened up our leader, got little spinning rods. Flatlining pilchers just drifting it, and I'm pretty sure I hooked the mutton. I, uh, Ryan and I both just caught a keeper yellowtail, but this yeah, thing is dogging me to the bottom. We tried putting weights on, but I, I think the way to go is flatline. Look at all the, whoa, beautiful little baits. That's what we're using, these pilchards that we netted this morning. So I'm trying not to put too much pressure on this fish because we have real light leader. It's only 30 pounds, yeah, little hooks. Boat. Coming this way. Ah. It's an omnicoat. I can tell you guys right one. now. Look at that. It's a mud. He's hooked. He's, <laughs> bar he's barely hooked. He's hooked in the Here, eye I got your rod. Nope. Look at how he's hooked. Can't you cook him? Look at that. Yeah, I could cook him up. So this is a little omnico jack. We caught a bunch of these offshore today. Man, he's literally hooked in the side of the face. We ran. 1,500 feet today, bro? 1,600. We were into 1,600. Not a lot of good defined weed lines. Just not a whole lot of life out there. Um, we found more We found more seaweed inshore than we did offshore, which is not good for dolphin. But um, we got one yellow tail. We're trying to make a good video for you guys. And sometimes you just got to take what the ocean gives you. And today, we got one keeper yellow tail in the box, released one, and uh, an almaco jack. But these guys eat so good as I've told you before. And you can always tell they got that really pronounced tall dorsal fin right there. So this is what we're doing. We're drifting the reef and uh, just like 15, 20 pound braid, 20, 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. And as your pilchard's going out, you have them throat hooked. And when you throat hook a bait, it makes it swim down because you're trying to pull the fish up off the reef. We're only in 30 feet of water. So they'll see it up there flickering and flashing and they try to come up and you leave it in free spool because when a yellowtail or something hits, they usually scream it off the reel. They want to grab it and swim back down. So if you have it in gear, they're going to drop it. So we leave it in free spool, let them get it down the hatch, and then you stick them. It's another snapper, pretty sure. Oh my you gosh. You just got rocked. I got rocked by a snapper. <laughs> you want me to drive over there? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh no, he's out, he's out, he's out. Oh man. 
you guys see that skill? That was legendary. You gotta put it in free spool for a little bit, let him swim out. Good. Oh, shoot. Patience. Another yeller tear. A little drag scream in action. You gotta have some patience sometimes. Brooke's the queen of patience. You're the one that'll wait on a grouper for like 10 minutes. Yeah. While all <laughs> right. We all just break them off. Oh. Dude. Do that thing. It's the right one. It's the I right species. That a flag. Oh, man. Look at that. Full of poop. That's even bigger than the Ryan's was. They're getting bigger, yeah. huh? You know, I gotta say something. We are so spoiled. Since we do so many catch clean cooks and we eat so many fish, we've kind of become fish snobs. Like, I don't know why. Sometimes we look at yellowtails as like, even though we promote the whole no such thing as trash fish, yellowtails are kind of one of our least favorite snapper to eat just because they're a little mushy. But Ryan's in town and he's been wanting to see I want to sit at the table, the famous blue table. I want to get interviewed and then be like, what'd you think of the meal, Ryan? I'll be like, guys, it was wonderful. You all, you know, it's, I'm so lucky to be here. It's just great. So I'm excited. I'm hoping that, you know, we can cook this guy up and have a great family meal. We are gonna. And it's like, I want him to see that it's not BS. A couple of you guys comment. I'm sure not the good fans, the bad fans. All those those things are staged, and Brooks holding a knife to you guys. None of that's true. All the all the meals we have at the house are good. No one's lying. So look at that, yellow tail snapper. This I would say this and dolphin are probably the two most like requested fish on charters in Southport, especially in the Keys. This guy lost all its color for some reason. All right, guys. Hey, this is what we're doing. So you're, wait, gonna, wait. you're gonna take the bait, and then you're gonna hook it here. You're gonna flip it out. It's so easy. Your kids could do it. It's actually really great for your kids to do. <laughs> is that exactly what I was gonna say? I mean, not that fast and not that sarcastic, but fairly similarly to that. All right. Let's see if so. I can match Ryan. <laughs> this is what you do. Ah, you first of all grab your net, your net. <laughs> Ooh, you gotta, you gotta find the bait. You gotta find the bait that speaks to you. You can't just pick any one, you Special know? Ones. ones that are gonna swim real good. If there Adam is. was here, I feel like he would say the selects. The, the petites. <laughs> you gotta pick a petite bait. This is, this is a little trick I'll show you guys. The best place to hook a pilchard, if you're drifting, is right there. You wanna know why? I'll show you why. See, Ryan, I'm not sticking to your dialogue. Yeah, well, you were going to until I said it. They were like, ah, oh, God, I gotta change it up. So now I flip him out there. Cool. As that pilchard feels tension, that hook is pulling down on him. He's pulling his head down. If I were to hook him in the nose, he would just be lollygagging on top and he's not gonna be in the strike zone. You hook him in the throat, they wanna swim down. And they also flash like that and you kind of stop them. And every once in a while you stop them like this, you give them a little twitch, makes the fish go crazy. One thing that a lot of people don't necessarily get right away, uh, when you're drift fishing, so that just means we're not anchored, we're moving with the water, is you always want to cast with the wind in your face. So the wind's in our face, it's pushing us away. So we cast out in that direction and it keeps bringing our bait away from us. If I threw out on that side of the boat, my bait would just go underneath the boat. It's a really in unnatural presentation. And if I do get hit, I'm probably not going to feel it or see it, so. Oh yeah, I'm on. It's been, some tough, it's been some tough fishing out here, I'll tell you guys Another what. Another big one. Look at that. Is that well, one legal? Yeah, yeah for think sure. So? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys know better than me. They're all decent sized fish. They're really pretty, though. But, so, how big does it have to get to be considered a flag? Because, like, giant ones, people always call flags. They're like five pounders. Is that it? I think, like, 18 inches. But you he's. Whoa! Whoa! Almost Whoa. lost him. I thought you almost released him. I mean, you know, that wouldn't have been the end of the world, but yeah because they do have this coloration, you see, down to their tails. You know, this one really wants to get away today, guys. But really big ones, like five, six pounders, they call flags. <laughs> but anyways, we're, we're happy to catch these guys regardless. Yep. They really are a little ferocious on these live baits. Going in the cooler. Yeah, we'll keep them. And if you guys don't know, Hey, Juno Ryan, don't you have a YouTube channel or something? I do have a YouTube channel. In fact, uh, you know, I'm always bouncing ideas off of Victor. You know, every once in a while, he bounces ideas off of me. Yeah. And, Ryan, uh, yeah. Ryan just got back from Okinawa, Japan, and he posted a lot of cool stuff there, catching dolphin off rocks. Um, he did a lot of offshore, like, yellowfin stuff. So uh, go and give those videos a like. Oh. Watch them. I'll have his channel link below as well as on the screen here. 
Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. All right, put them in. So I'm gonna show you guys my favorite way to eat a yellowtail snapper. I think it does this fish kind of injustice to not eat it either a whole or with the skin on. So if you eat a snapper with the skin on, real simple, get yourself a scaling tool, butter knife, anything that's not sharp and just run it from the tail half to the head half like this. And those scales are gonna fly off. Make sure you get up here by the head, by the peck fin, everywhere. And you wanna make sure you do this before you fillet because you, um, it would be a disaster trying to do it on a fillet itself. So do this real good. Okay, so we do this on both sides, then we give it a good rinse, and then I'll show you guys what to do next. Get yourself a nice little sharp knife like this Dexter, and you guys can always save 20% off Dexter knives. Use my code LANDSHARK. Linked below, these are the knives that you always see Brooke and I use. Right here behind the head. Outline our ye little yellowtail. A lot of people like to do like the whole one swipe yellowtail deal. I don't really like to do that. I like to glide along the spine like that. I feel like my yield is better and I don't end up with the rib cage in my fillet as well. See, I go over that. Right there. I feel like you get a little bit better yield when you um, don't just one off it like that. Let me tell you guys something. Back in the day, Victor was terrible at filleting fish. Whoa. I used to always have to fillet his fish for him. Now him and Broke, Broke, him and Broke can absolutely just smoke me when it comes to filleting fish. I'm terrible compared to them. They've been filleting so many. So it's good to see that experience can get you there. Thanks, Ryan. I used to make fun of Victor a lot for his fillet jobs. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You just got to practice anything in life, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's all so, about hours. Yeah, that's it. Repetition, repetition, repetition. I actually left a little bit of that rib cage in there. We just go right underneath it, cut it out, and get rid of these. Get rid of that. Now you have these little pesky pin bones, which lie about halfway down the length of the fillet. You go on both sides. And so, one of the reasons that I love eating yellowtail either whole or with the skin on is they're very. Um, they're kind of mushy and flaky but that's a beautiful thing about this fish because it kind of melts in your mouth but I find that the skin kind of holds your fillet together better so here is our Almaco Jack another one of my favorite eats this is the complete opposite of yellowtail this is a very firm fish right behind the head I don't know about you guys but I love me a, a nice sharp knife There's just something so satisfying about hearing all those pin bones and bones just break when you fillet, you know? There's your Almaco Jack. Most people, they catch this on the reef and they're like, uh-uh, I ain't dealing with this thing. I don't like these things, these are trash. Nine times out of 10, I will take that, this over that and you guys will see it in the kitchen and Ryan's never actually had it and I'm very curious to see what he thinks. Because growing up, isn't it like yellowtail is the thing to catch, the thing to eat, isn't it? It's yellowtail and mahi and that's it, throw everything else back. That's, <laughs> yeah, and we fished for mahi today and it was, you know, it was a grind. We did not get on the dolphin. We ran out to 1,600 feet, fished weed lines in 400 feet, fished weed lines in 600, 900, um, there wasn't much weed out real deep So we just took the skin off we'll leave a very thin layer on there and in case you guys are wondering what we do with all our scraps We generally save it for this pretty lady right here <laughs> This is Brookie's grandma the famous YouTube grandma that catches all the crab dinners We save her all of the heads the carcasses everything we can get and she just told us the other day that she ran out of bait So here we are getting her as much as we can <laughs> so Tonight's dish is slightly inspired by Yames. You guys have been loving him in the videos. I gave him a call. He's in the Keys right now crushing the snapper and I asked them uh, how to make a red pepper kui. So I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm learning, so that's what we're doing. Olive oil in a little stock pot. 
And this is just, uh, I'm gonna add two diced red bell peppers in there. So pepper's been going for about five minutes. We're gonna add around a tablespoon or so of sugar. Sweeten it up a little bit. Apple cider vinegar. Give it some acidity. And as that apple cider vinegar cooks down too, it's gonna get a little bit sweet as well. So it's not gonna have that really strong kick, you know? Watch. This is how you know your seasonings well. You just sniff them out well, and just look at them. When you take all the caps off and just arrange them like that. Yeah, this is giving Ryan some serious <laughs> OCD it's right like now. Anxiety <laughs> right now. <laughs> Watch this. You guys are gonna probably think I'm crazy for this spice blend, but check it out. So I've made uh, like a zatar type spice blend in the past with mutton snapper. This is a little bit of cinnamon. I already have some, but I, I need more. Cinnamon. Nobody thinks of cinnamon when they think of fish. At least I don't think they do. Allspice. Okay, we're gonna do a little allspice. These are all very fragrant, delicious things. This is marjoram. My grandma used to use this a lot in ducks, in duck dishes, I remember. Cardamom. Smells so good. Paprika. Garlic powder. That's what you guys need, land shark garlic powder. <laughs> uh-huh. Cumin. Sumic. I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's got like a kind of a bitter lemony taste. Some oregano. Coriander. Okay, and last but not least, we got some nutmeg. And I know you guys might be thinking at home like, oh my gosh, you literally just dumped your entire spice cabinet, but these flavors work. Not too much, not too much of one thing, just everything in the kind of equal parts. It works, man, it works. Onions, going into a stock pot with olive oil. Woo! Whenever you cook fish with the skin on, you gotta score your fish before you season it like me, which I made the mistake of. When you score the skin, what it does is it prevents it from curling up, so kind of just make lines in it like that. Now that our onions are a little bit brown, we're gonna add some red bell pepper. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic. Okay, and we're gonna add our couscous directly in here, toast it a little bit. Yeah, you toast the couscous a little bit, it gets a little brown. It gets that kind of like nutty flavor. Can you smell it a little bit? Oh yeah, I can smell it. So now we got a non-stick pan. Added just enough um, avocado oil to coat the bottom of it. We're gonna add some chicken stock to our couscous. Skin side down on the yellow tail, really high oil. Really hot oil? What did I say, really high? Really high oil. Re really hot oil. Yeah. Oil's from Colorado. <laughs> Got a little salad, cucumber, chickpea, grape tomatoes, black pepper. Ryan asked me, he goes, what's with all the hype on the pink Himalayan salt? I don't know, man. Maybe you guys know the answer, comment below, because we don't know. Seems pretty bougie. Very bougie. The juice of half a lime. Some olive oil, parsley, and everything's better with feta cheese. Can I just tell you guys I've been waiting two years for this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start off with a little red pepper kuiak. Cooly, cooly, I don't know how to say it, but it's a little runny. Not really the consistency I wanted it to be, but you know what? You just gotta work with what you got, right? You kinda just gotta improvise. Get a little bit of this little mini spatula action. 
It'll, oh, look at that little extra uh, dot. Uh, that looks nice, actually. <laughs> it's pretty aesthetic. <laughs> Israeli couscous with our red pepper. I don't know why I got four plates. There's only three of us, but maybe someone else. Yeah, it's for you guys at home. I got a fourth plate and extra beer. Now watch this. Look at how beautiful this little salad is we got. With the feta and the cucumber and the tomato and the parsley. And then you come here and you get yourself a nice piece of yellowtail and you lay it right there on top. It's not quite game status, but it'll do. It'll do. How about some of that? Whoo, plate turn in action. How did we do, Yames? How did we do? Like Victor said earlier, we were kind of spoiled with the fact that we don't really care to eat yellowtail snapper. The first snapper Victor caught up of the day, he let it go. And I was like, Victor, come on, let's try to make a video here. Let's get some fish in the boat. You can cook yellowtails, just let's do it. And so he kept the rest of them and I mean, he blew this out of the park. <laughs> like, had said that when James cooked for him, it kind of like re-inspired him to like make better dishes. Shout out to Brooke, she's the real MVP. Um, you guys gotta understand something. When we film videos for you guys, we kind of feel guilty trying to if we film the same thing over and over, we try not to be repetitive, but I always have to tell myself at the end of the day that you just gotta tell the story. We're here to share our adventure with you guys, and you know, it turned out to be a really good day with Brooke, with, Brooke, with Ryan. Ryan's never ate fish with us before. He's uh, prepping what he's gonna say right now at the famous blue table, but um, we had a really good dinner. The yellowtail was good. I'm very happy with how the dish came out and I'm happy to be able to serve it to the people that I love and have all the people at the table. Ryan, how'd you like your fish, man? Well, I'm still like crushing it right now, so uh, I think that's probably a good sign. Um, the fish is amazing. Every time you guys see one of these interviews, everyone says the fish is amazing and it's true. Um, I just want to say how proud I am of these two sitting at this table with me. Um, uh -huh. I've kind of watched them grow over the past couple years. Um, I've known them for a very long time. From day one, Ryan's an OG. Yeah. Um, but just two very, very hardworking people, extremely ambitious, and these guys are the real deal. Um, what you see on the camera is what you get in real life. So it's super proud of them, um, happy to be here. Um, and that's really it, just you know, feel blessed to be able to share a meal with two people that I really, really admire. Aww. He's gonna make all of us tear up tonight. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and go ahead and check out Ryan's channel. I'm gonna have it linked below. It's Juno Ryan. We're definitely gonna be filming a bunch of videos together. We got a Keys trip planned. Um, we're gonna try to get on some tarpon on the beach, a bunch of stuff. So, uh, catch you guys in the next one.